It's really a pleasure to be here, and I think uh, it's very fitting because I think if resilience is about having the strength to withstand challenges and real, real um, issues, um, I think the docks where the crystal is based is a fantastic example of resilience. And I'm going to uh, start with a story about this woman because this area has been about struggle for a very long time. This woman is a woman called uh, Minnie Baldock. And Minnie Baldock, uh, in 1906, set up the uh, Canning Town branch of the Women's Social and Political Union. She was a friend of Sylvia Pankhurst. She was a suffragette. Uh, East London was a very uh, big area in terms of suffragettes and the fight for women's rights. And in 1908, Sylvia was uh, demonstrating outside the House of Commons uh, for women's rights and the rights of women to vote. And she was arrested. And she was put into Holloway Prison uh, for a month. And she was asked, aren't you worried about leaving your family and your husband uh, for the month while you're in prison? And she said, it's OK. Canning Town will take care of them. And that's a really great story about this area. I've done a lot of kind of reading about Minnie and the suffragettes in this area. We went through incredible struggles through that time, but a sense of community and place that's always been in this part of London. And Winston Churchill on the Silvertown, uh, on the Silvertown Bridge there. And then, you know, as we kind of moved towards the, uh, the war, obviously this area suffered greatly. It was a major kind of area for bombing during the war. And as you can see, and this is in parts of Canning Town, was an area that people really had to show their resilience uh, through a very, very difficult time when whole communities just disappeared in a series of bombings throughout this part, the docks being a major kind of target during the Blitz. And this area here in terms of the docks, you know, this was the gateway of the British Empire, you know, for all goods coming from all over the empire would come in through the Royal Docks. So it was an incredible kind of following the war the docks were a lively place. 20,000 people were employed. Mostly people that lived in and around this area in East London were actually employed in the docks during that time. But as you can see, what's happened in the docks when you look out at that very clear water out the front, in 1981, the docks closed. So this was the kind of, you know, there was a kind of issue around the war. Then, the, then now we've got this issue of deindustrialization of this area. And with the closing of the docks went everybody's livelihoods in this area. And this is a poverty map that was done at the turn of the century. The dark green, you can see the kind of Isle of Dogs, and you can see our bit of Newham in that bit on the right. And the darkest green represents the areas of greatest poverty. Now, this is the turn of the century, and the dark green was all around Tower Hamlets. And if you look at it now, the dark green is all around this area. So this area, you can see that the, the poverty map since the late 19th century, hasn't actually changed a whole lot. So, you know, all of these different kind of challenges and struggles for the communities in and around this area, and this is the kind of thing that I wanted to talk about. Why, you know, what's Newham Council's role? What can Newham Council do as a body? Why should it intervene in this? We think we've got a role to play in trying to turn the tide of this poverty and to enable people to be a lot more resilient. And last year, our mayor produced this document, which is called Resilience. And it was kind of interesting that the topic of TED was just like spooky, wasn't it? It was called Resilience. And in it, we set out what we think our role as a council is in actually enabling people to be a lot more resilient, how we can enable communities to be a lot more resilient. And at the heart of our regeneration policy here in Newham is the idea that we have a role to play. And our, the biggest thing as a council we can do is to assist people to get money in their pockets. This whole issue of economic resilience. Because unless people have money in their pocket and they can feed their families, unless they have kind of individual resilience and through actually working, which is a major part of that, if they don't have that, they're 
there's less opportunity for them to be part of something much bigger with their community because they're too worried about the day-to-day -day existence. So at the heart of our regeneration policy is the need to create jobs. It's very, very simple. And one of our kind of major arms of our kind of policy is workplace. And workplace, you know, at the moment local government is going through incredible changes. You know, our council alone in the next, you know, over the last three years has had to save 100 million pounds of our budget. So major, major, major cuts. And the only service that has not been affected by those changes and the cuts is workplace. And roughly £6 million of the council's money goes into workplace every year. And we work with thousands of new residents who are unemployed. And the priority is for working with people who have been unemployed for a year or more. You know, so people who are really struggling to find work. And last year we got 5,000 people into jobs. We've got a target of another 5,000 people. But if you add all of those people up, you know, in terms of you know, how they've been enabled through actually getting work, it really starts making a difference to what's actually happening within the borough. And we've been involved in a whole range of different things through workplace. Sorry, oh, thank you. Um, and one of the kind of other kind of key threads of what we're trying to achieve in terms of our policy is how we've kind of lobbied for transport. And I know it's only 17 minutes, <laughs> every 17 minutes for the DLR. But in terms of what another kind of key thing that the council has done all the way during the 1980s, this area was fairly kind of isolated in terms of its connections with the rest of London. And during the 80s, our councillors and local people lobbied to get an extension to the Jubilee Line, which was completed in 1999. And that was a really pivotal thing for this part of London, because although there was a district line and a whole range of other things, the Jubilee Line to Stratford you know, meant that you could get from central London to Stratford in 20, 25 minutes. And that may seem kind of for people who are on a kind of tube network, not a big deal. But for this part of town, it was an absolute major catalyst for change in this area. Because on the back of the Jubilee line came Westfields. <clears throat> and everybody thinks everything about East London has been actually about the Olympics. Well, the Olympics were a part, obviously a huge part of it. But things were happening before then. Westfields, my first job was in a Westfields, working in a chemist. I was very good. <laughs> Westfields <coughs> brought with it 8,000 jobs. And it was something that was very important. And you might not like shopping malls, and you might not look like how it looks, and you might not think that this is the best way to do your shopping. But for us, it brought 8,000 jobs. And the deal that we struck with Westfields is on the day that it opened, in September 2011, 1,600 people from Ewan had to be workers at Westfields. And the best company, I'm going to give them a plug, give them a global plug, John Lewis, absolutely fantastic. Really good company to work with, very committed to getting local people into jobs. Two people from Workplace and our managers for different bits of the sections. So, you know, this development has had a major catalytic effect in terms of creating economy and creating jobs. And it actually was happening way before the Olympics was awarded. Their planning application actually went in in 2005. And on the back of Westfields, which is all about jobs and economy, now we see 40 million people coming through Westfields. They thought they'd get 23 million people a year coming through their doors. 40 million in the first, that's phenomenal, isn't it? 40 million people. Um, through the first year. On the back of that was obviously the Olympics. And with the Olympics, I think the biggest thing for me that the Olympics brought were two things. One was the sense that East London was part of London, you know? And the number of times I'd come into work, I worked down the other end of the dock, I'd come into work during the Olympics, and it was always buzzing with people saying, I didn't realise it was this close to central London. Oh, I didn't realise, I didn't realise this was here. <laughs> the airport, <laughs> Excel, the crystal. I didn't realise it was here. I didn't realise it was so close. And what it did is it gave Newham profile. It gave East London profile. So that was one clear thing that it did. And the other thing it did is make people feel good. It was a really kind of good thing. Local people felt good about things. It felt good in Newham. And it actually was so sunny 
it was the sunny, <laughs> sunniest I've ever experienced in London ever during that period, that it was just, a, Newham looked fabulous, absolutely looked fabulous, like it does today. Now, the next things that are coming that will drive this, if you like, economy and jobs and resilience is Crossrail. And Crossrail is actually coming into this part of the docks. And with it, again, will be this connectivity with London, that East London is part of London. This will be Custom House Station, which is right near the XL. Um, and with Crossrail, we can see now the people are getting really interested in what's actually happening in and around the docks. And you can see that over time, little additions, if you like, this is out the front of here. This is our, fam our famous and very favourite little addition, which is the crystal as it sits now with the cable car. And what we're trying to do now, the key thing for us, is to make sure that when people come over from Greenwich on the cable car, they don't take a round trip, <laughs> which is what happens quite a lot. They actually stop here in Newham. So a lot of our regeneration work is in and around this part of the docks and actually maximising on the opportunities that the crystal and the cable car can bring. Great shot of that, actually. But what's also happening in the docks, because of all of this kind of movement of, of you know, activity and interest and energy that's actually happening, this is the building where I work, right opposite the runway of London City Airport which is a great place to work, actually. And just down here is UEL. I need to say that. Selena's talking later. And then we've got here, this site here is Royal Albert Dock. Now, that site, you can imagine at some point, would have had lots of uh, ships coming into it and offloading all their goods. But what's coming, forget about the design. We haven't finalised that yet. <laughs> we've got a Chinese company, actually, who are bringing 20,000 jobs into this development between UEL, University of East London, and our building at Dockside. And that will be the home for 300 new Chinese companies who will be basing in London. But with it is coming 20,000 jobs. And if you look at the London plan, which is the Mayor of London's plan, you'll see in it that they have a, an assumption that this whole area of Newham was going to be a big kind of residential dormitory town, if you like. And what we've really pushed for as a council to make sure that these big development sites are not just about homes, but they're importantly about jobs. Because in some ways, our role is to redress the balance. And if regeneration is about you know, acting where there's been market failure, there's been incredible market failure in this part of London. And it's extremely important for us to really push for the types of developments that will bring jobs because homes are being built. Homes will be built. It's profitable to build homes. It's le less profitable to build these types of developments and those are the type of developments we really want. So this is Canning Town. This is just up the road. Just up the road and it's one of our major, well, it's our major regeneration program. And this is where we're building homes with development partners. And over a period, there'll be 10,000 new homes built in Canning Town, right near Canning Town Station. But it will also bring with it a new town centre with new businesses and new jobs. Again, having jobs at the kind of heart of all the developments that we're looking at. Obviously, this is uh, Westfields, but we've also got Lend Lease, who we're talking to, it's going to be picked up, I think, in Richard's talk about Southwark. Lend Lease, we're working with on the International Quarter, which will be 4 million square foot of commercial development. Again, it's about jobs. Obviously, the Athletes Village, which is on the right, developing you know, new, new homes for people, as we speak, being converted into new homes. But again, the whole priority around Stratford is around jobs and economic resilience. This area, again, has been designated an enterprise zone. It was designated in 2011 as an enterprise zone. And we have incentives for different companies to actually come in and locate here. I think Siemens are benefiting from, from benefits from being here, um, as will be ABP, the company that I was talking about in terms of um, the development next to our building. And those are the sites where preferential deals are being done with particular developers to encourage them to bring jobs as opposed to, to homes in those areas. And the next bit of the kind of jigsaw for us in terms of connectivity and opening this area as an economic area is about dealing with the, uh, the issue of river crossings. 
So if you kind of think about you know, the river crossings all from here, if you like, from Tower Bridge all the way through central London, there's one you know, every couple of hundred metres. Whereas here, the, one, the ne next one from obviously uh, from Blackwall is Dartford Tunnel. And a big thing, not just for us, but also for the south side of the, the river in terms of Woolwich and all of the areas Thames meet on the south, we're working with Greenwich at the moment around looking at how we get another kind of crossing that kind of links the communities on both sides of the river. Because interestingly, a lot of people that live in North Woolwich here actually take the, the, uh, the foot tunnel, Woolwich foot tunnel, and go and do their shopping in Woolwich. There's connectivity between those areas that we want to reinforce by getting a crossing that not only lets cars go across, but also pedestrians, bikes, and public transport. Now, this is the bit where I wanted to kind of bring in. So my icon, my icon is this, <laughs> this Newham, Newham London bunting, OK? And then this is our corporate color, which I think is great. Pink, right, so that's our corporate color. Now, um, are any of you involved in the big lunch? Oh, just you and me, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a small lunch. Okay, the big lunch. I mean, this area, if you look at, especially around Jubilee time and things like that, you know, England, England and Britain's had a very huge history of uh, street parties, which, uh, which are great. Now, the big lunch was set up by the Eden Project in 2009, and it's a really simple principle. And the principle is we're much stronger as a community if we work together than as an individual. And the whole premise of big lunch, is to just eat with your neighbours. It's a very, very simple. So you actually literally bring out, I bring out my Weber barbecue out <laughs> to the front, and so does John, who's from Jamaica, and we have a barbecue off every big lunch. And it started off with just 10 of us. My, my street in Peckham is a very typical street in London. There's private housing, there's social housing, there's people living in housing associations. There's flats, there's houses. So it's a very typical street. And the first year we did it in 2009, 10 of us did it. Lots of other neighbours ate our food, <laughs> especially mine. But, you know, it was only 10. And over the years, we've now got everyone in our street except for one woman who's very upset we're closing the street for the day. <laughs> there's always one. You can't get her shopping in. On the, so it's June 2nd, and it's a principle that, you know, it's about knowing who your neighbours are. And it's a really fantastic principle because in some ways it goes back to Minnie's story about Canning Town taking care of her family. It's actually about just knowing who everybody is, knowing what food they eat, <laughs> in this case, knowing who's really good at barbecuing, knowing, you know, just knowing each other. And the big lunch is a really important principle, I think, in terms of thinking about how communities work. Because it's these more informal social networks. It's more the kind of when I'm washing my van on a Sunday, my camper van, you know, John now comes down and has a chat to me. And, you know, it's a very nice kind of way of, I think food is a great opportunity to kind of talk to people. But events themselves are a really important part of actually bringing people and different tribes together for different reasons. That's a big lunch tribe. And I think another thing, you think, well, what's this got to do with Newham? Well, alongside our budget for workplace, which is a substantial budget, the other thing the council feels is extremely important in terms of our role is throwing parties. <laughs> now, you're laughing. It's absolutely true. One of the biggest things of our kind of, you know, work around community resilience is enabling events, enabling people to organise their own events. And this one here is the Mayor's Show. And the Mayor's Show is every year in July. And it's a, an opportunity for community organisation, a whole range of different people to come and actually gather in our parks and actually show what's actually happening in the community, different groups, what the council's doing, all those kind of things. A lot of councils do that, but over time people are cutting down on their budgets on things like this. We're not. Where every year it just gets bigger and bigger. This is Carnival, where we actually invest in actually working with schools, a whole range of different community organisations, to just bring them together for an event. It's a really important part of what we do. And for me, this is a really important part 
of like connections is fun. It's actually about lightness. It's, a, it's about the struggles, but actually the best way of dealing with the struggles is through laughter and being with other people that you care about. And it does lead to people's resilience. It makes them have confidence in government. The more we do as government, the more confidence they'll have for us to support them through those hard times, through those times when their backs are against the wall. And for me, the best thing about working at Newham is this sense that that's a really important part of the role that we play. So thanks very much. <laughs>